Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue our research into three-phase systems, and in particular, we're going to go back to our imbalanced three-phase load and see what happens with the current inside the neutral conductor when it's connected in a star configuration. Now, in a previous video, you'll remember that we did a whole heap of maths to try and figure out what was happening with our neutral current. And you remember that that involved doing some trigonometry, finding coordinates, combining them in a bit of Pythagoras to get to our answer. Now, obviously, this is a very accurate method of calculating the neutral current. However, it is quite time consuming. So in this video, we're going to show you a slightly less accurate, but much easier method that also helps us to understand a little bit more deeply exactly what's happening when these uh, currents in L1, L2 and L3 combine inside the neutral conductor. Now the method I'm about to show you is a little bit mathematically easier than the method in the previous video. And if you stay right until the end, I will show you the very easiest method for calculating neutral current in an imbalanced three-phase system. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is write down the measurements that we recorded in a previous video uh, when we were at the test rig uh, inside our workshop and we took the readings 4.1 amperes in L1, we had 16.1 amperes in L2 and we had 8.1 amperes in L3. And we also measured that in the neutral, so the current in the neutral was 10.2 amperes. So the method we're about to use will show how these currents combine with each other and hopefully get us somewhere in the ballpark of this 10.2. But again, if you remember in the previous video, the calculated method, the current was slightly higher in the calculation that we did due to perhaps various uh, factors in the testing equipment and maybe the fact that we rounded off along the way meant the answer was a little bit different. So let's see how we're going to do this graphical method now. So in order to do this graphical method of calculating neutral current, we first of all need to set a reasonable uh, scale for our drawing that we're going to produce. So I'm going to say on my piece of A4 paper here with these values that if I make one centimetre equal one ampere, then that should give us a pretty good drawing. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a vertical line that is uh, 4.1 centimetres long. So I'm going to draw that here now, 4.1 centimetres long. So I'll draw it from there down to there. And this is again making use of the phases that we can use to represent the current inside the circuit. So there we've got our L1 arrow. And of course we know that L1 is equal to 4.1 amperes, which is why it's 4.1 centimetres long. Now what we're going to do is from the bottom end of that arrow, we are going to uh, draw our L2 phaser. So if I mark, if I just line up my, the middle of my protractor uh, with the end of the arrow here, so you can see there's the bottom end of the arrow, and I'll just line up the center of my protractor with that, pointing up at zero degrees, and the angle that I'm interested in, just move that out of the way, is all the way around here, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, round at 120 degrees. So we'll just put a little mark there, and that's where our angle's gonna go off at. So if I now measure from the end of that arrow, down this way, we'll find that that will be 16.1 centimeters long. Again, to tie up with the fact that this represents 16.1 amperes. So we'll just put a little arrow on the end of that to indicate that that is a phaser. 120 degrees round, because of course we know that the three phases in a three phase system are out of phase by 120 degrees. So now what we'll do is we will put in at a further 120 degrees round from our uh, second arrow there. So that was at 120. So now we'll come round here to 240 and then we'll draw our third arrow, L3, which will be 8.1 centimetres long, and we'll draw that from the end of there across to here. So there's 8.1 from there to there. So I've got 8.1 centimetres now. So L2 over here we said was 16.1 amperes, 
and we said that L3 over here was 8.1 amperes like that. Now, in order to graphically represent what's happening with these currents when they all meet each other, we can kind of use uh, an illustration that we used in a previous video. Imagine that we've got an object here and that these objects, or this object here is having a force uh, operating on it. And actually it's having three forces acting on it. It's having a force trying to pull it in this direction, a force trying to pull it in this direction, and a force trying to pull it off in this direction. So what does your intuition suggest the direction of that object would go? Obviously the biggest pull is coming this way, so it's gonna kind of head off down this way to some extent, but it's also being affected by this one, which is trying to drag it off that way, and it's being affected by this one, which is trying to stop it from going that way. So they kind of all balance out, and we end up with something going off in something like this direction. Now we can actually physically draw on here how those three forces would kind of interact and counteract each other. But of course we're not talking about forces, we're talking about currents. But the same principles apply actually. So what we've got to do is, first of all, we draw uh, parallel lines to all of these arrows. And I'll show you what I mean by that. For starters, let's just ignore L3. We'll imagine that that doesn't exist for right now. Okay, so we're just interested in finding out what happens when these two currents meet up with each other in the neutral conductor. And again, the way that we do that is we go to the other end of the arrow now, to L1. And what we've got to do is draw a line that is parallel to this line. So the way that we do that, again, let's line up our protractor on the top end of the arrow there, like that. And again, we come round by 120 degrees round to there. And if we do that, that's going to give us a line that is parallel to this one. Okay, so let's draw that in there. And if you look at the back edge of the ruler there, you can see that this is pretty much looking parallel. So we'll just draw a dashed line coming down here. Like that. As long as it sort of overshoots, it doesn't really matter how long it is. And then what we're going to do from the end of this arrow is we're going to draw a line coming up vertically. Now, we want to make sure that we get this angle correct here. Um, and all we've got to do is kind of think about it in these terms. If this arrow had carried on, we would have had 120 degrees there, which means that this angle here would be 180 minus 120 which means that we actually end up with a 60 degree angle there. And because we're drawing a parallelogram, this angle here and this angle here must be the same. So if we line this up with our 60 degrees running along the end of the arrow there, so there's 60 degrees coming around this way now. So there's 60 degrees coming around this way. I've got the end of the arrow under the crosshairs, so I'll just put a little mark up here now at zero. And again, if I draw a parallel line, I'll make it dashed so that you can clearly see what's happening here. Now, the point at which these two lines converge is really, really important because if we join up the base of the two arrows to where those two lines cross over, what we end up with there, and I'll draw this one in, uh, dashed. I'll draw this one in solid, I think, so that we can see that that's the resultant of those two. So actually, if we had just these two currents on this circuit, if we didn't have L3 going on, then actually the length of this line here would tell us what the neutral current would be. So we've combined the two effects of these currents into a new current line here. So what's the next step? Well, now what we need to do is we need to figure out what's happening with this line and this line. So we need to figure out how these two are affecting each other. So again, we're going to draw a line that is parallel to this one from the end of this arrow. And we're going to draw a line that is parallel to the end of this line that's parallel to this one. Now, one of the interesting things about this method is that actually it doesn't matter which order you do it in. So we could have balanced out these two arrows first. We could have done this one and this one and then done that one. It really doesn't matter as long as uh, you remember to do all three. So let's try and figure out how we can draw a parallel line to this line down here and how we can draw a parallel line to this line down here from the end of this one. Now, in order to kind of help with this, it's useful if you can... Uh, make this line, if you either imagine it carrying on past the end here, or we'll just put in a, a faint dashed line here so that we can see 
that continuing. Now that's just going to help us to figure out what angle needs to go on here because actually what we need to do to get a, a parallel line down here that's parallel to this one, we need to kind of match this angle here to whatever this angle here will be. And it's kind of the principle of a, what's called an F angle on parallel lines, uh, which you may remember from your school days. So if we just pop our protractor on there, so we've got the crosshairs in the centre of the drawing, we've lined up zero with this kind of extension of this line here, and as you can see here, we've got an angle that is coming around the inside, 10, 20, 30, 40, just over 45 degrees. So we want to go 45 and just a hair more off the end of that. So we'll line up our crosshairs with the end of this arrow. And if we come round here and go 40, there's 45. And again, just a hair past there like that. Just a tiny little bit past it. And then again, we can now draw a line coming off in this direction. And we'll do this in a dashed line styly again. So we'll have this coming across here like this. There's our dashed line and this line is now parallel to that line. And then we're going to repeat that same process up at this end. And the beauty of this is that actually this angle here again needs to match this angle here because we're actually drawing a parallelogram and in parallelograms opposite angles match each other. So again let's get this lined up. So I'll put my crosshair on the end of my arrow like so, and then I will come round here, round to 45, so there's 45 and just a fraction more. Line up with the end of my arrow and line up with my mark that I've made, and the more accurate I can be here, the more accurate my final answer will be. And again, draw a dashed line down here. Now again, at this point here, where these two lines cross over each other, this line is absolutely critical because what we're going to draw in here now actually represents what our neutral current will be. Because what's happened now is we've taken into account the effect that all of these original arrows were having on each other. And now we've got to the point where we've actually found the current in the neutral. And what will the current in the neutral be? Well, we've just got to measure it. So if we measure from the middle of our three phase arrows that we've drawn up and measure down to there. Can you see we've come out with 10.4 centimeters and 10.4 centimeters on here equals 10.4 amperes, which means we're just ever so slightly above the value that we're looking for by about 0.2 of an amp. But again, we can see that, you know, maybe there's some slight inaccuracies in the measuring equipment, in the application of that equipment and we can see that we've come within a very, very reasonable value of what it should be. So that's how we can find the neutral current using these phases to represent our three currents in L1, L2 and L3. And also it's just worth having a look. If we bring in our drawing from the previous video, where we didn't necessarily map this out with parallel lines, but we calculated what was going on, we saw that this would represent the neutral arrow. So if you look at this here, you see you've got that there, and then look at the one behind it, you can see that actually it's coming down at the same length and angle as our neutral current in our drawing from the previous video. So it's just an alternative way of calculating neutral current in an imbalanced three-phase system. However, what we need to bear in mind is that this method is a little bit inaccurate because we're relying on measuring equipment and the application of that measuring equipment might not be quite right. So the method that we looked at previously is kind of a, a better, more accurate method. However, this one will suffice in certain situations. It's very important though that you ask your teacher, if you're going into an exam that might feature this kind of question, which method is preferred, if there is a preferred method, and read the question carefully because it may ask you to do it in a very specific way. Now as promised, if you've stayed on till the end of the video, or let's face it, skipped forward in the video, there is now the very, very easiest method of calculating neutral current. And actually when I showed this to my learners after everything I'd put them through uh, using all the other methods, uh, they were uh, slightly displeased, let's put it that way. So let's start off uh, with this method first of all. So this is really nice and easy. So again, we just draw a vertical arrow here, and this represents our L1 current of 4.1 amperes. So I'll put a little arrow on the end of that to indicate that that is 
L1 and it's equal to 4.1 amperes. And then what's quite nice about this is we can remember that actually we're just draw kind of drawing what could be an equilateral triangle, uh, but won't be because of the, the lengths. In fact, this is sometimes called the triangular method of calculation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my crosshair on the end of the arrow, like so, and then off the top end of the arrow there, I'm going to measure around 60 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 is right there. Now this is 60 degrees because instead of drawing the arrow uh, coming off this way at 120, we're kind of going to draw it coming down this way parallel to what it would have been. So obviously 120 from an extension of this line would have got us around to here, but we're just going 60 degrees here, which is of course the angle in an equilateral triangle. Then we come off the end of that arrow and we come down this way by 16.1 to represent L2. So these are just exactly the same values as we used before. So if this method is good, it should get us to the same neutral current again. So this comes down here and that represents L2 at 16.1 amperes. And then we do the same thing again. So I'm going to line up my crosshairs with the uh, arrow end of the arrow, not the base end of the arrow. And I'm going to come round from there, there's zero degrees, I'm going to come round 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, down to here, and just pop on there, 60 degrees, and then we're going to come down here by 8.1, which is the length of the L3 current. So there we go, so there's our 8.1 centimetres which represents our L3 current. So L3 is equal to 8.1 amperes. And then what's really lovely about this method, and as you can see, it's really, really easy. If you haven't guessed already, how are we gonna measure the neutral current? Well, we're gonna measure the neutral current very, very simply by just measuring from the end of the L3 arrow up to the base of L1. So this line here, I'll just put it in dash just so you can differentiate it from the other lines. That arrow there represents the neutral current. Uh, so the neutral current, as you can see on the screen, is it's coming out at about 10.5. So again, uh, my measurements might be a little bit off, my angles might be a little bit off, but the measured value is 10.5 amperes, which actually got us a little bit closer to our very accurate value that we calculated uh, in the very first video in uh, this, uh, this series. So as you can see, two methods uh, that complement each other. There's nothing wrong with any of these methods at all, but it's worth repeating. Please make sure that you check with your teacher which method you're expected to use because the exam board who uh, set your exams and your qualifications may require you to do it in a specific way. So check with your teacher and read the question really, really carefully to make sure that you're using an approved method other than that, thank you very much for watching.